Welcome to the last three brain cells here. I'm Sammy Terramina here, blogger of Around the OA, the host of OA Now, and the host of Between Tim and Oriented of Tosian. Um, I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice and those on SoundCloud. Um, this week here, we got um, Ian Weatherspoon. Of course, Ian Weatherspoon cannot make it with us today. Um, he um, is taking care of his, um, his baby, baby Marlo. Um, Ian, welcome. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for having me, sir. Um, a lot to talk about this week. Obviously, um, the NFL schedules came out last week. Um, just some exciting moments here when you look at some of the easiest schedules and some of the most nightmaric schedules. I mean, like, I mean, like, some of them you just want to just like go like, yippee! I'm gonna lead myself, I mean, lead my team to a playoff spot, and then others are gonna be like, wah! That's what it is. So, without further ado, let's look at um. Let's look at our. Let's look at the schedule. I mean, obviously, when you look at the um, top five schedules um, in the NFL, obviously the easiest schedule, you know, has to come through with a team of yours that you're familiar with. It's the New Orleans Saints. So, what is yeah. your thoughts about the New Orleans Saints schedule? I mean, like obviously having one of the most easiest schedules, of course, playing in a division like the AFC South, which is just absolutely just like a. Um, like a like a quagmire, obviously, when you look at, of course, the change that division's made. Um, you, you know, when you look at the Saints, obviously, with their situation, I mean, quarterback has been a big question mark for them. Um, they got a lot of holes to fill. So what is your thoughts on the Saints getting the, one of the most easiest schedules in the NFL? I think that's good for Derek Carr, eh, and the new quarterback uh, situation there. Uh, Tom Brady's out of the division now. He's got a rookie quarterback in Carolina. And Atlanta with, I mean, Desmond Ritter's completely unproven. So to me, on paper, it looks like that division is the Saints to lose. They have a good defense. They have some weapons. And then you toss in Derek Carr, like I said, that seems like a division winner to me. Uh, when you talk about the, you when you talk, factor in the easy schedule. When you talk Saints in the word defense, that doesn't make sense. I mean, obviously under... Then coach Sean Payton, I mean, like, their defense was just absolutely atrocious under Payton. And then, you know, I mean, like. Always. Not always. Yeah, they were. Be honest. They were absolutely terrible under Sean Payton. You know it. I know it. The whole world knows it. I mean, like. the year they won the Super Bowl. They had a decent defense. Not a great defense. And you know that. their head coach is a uh, defensive dude. So, you know, they went in a different direction once Sean Payton left. So, I, I. and and they were able to trade away defensive playmakers because they had so many. Right. Uh, you had that secondary pipeline. especially. Right, that um, pipeline. You know what I mean? You know so I, I, I think they have a solid roster and I think they have the best roster in the division, frankly. I mean Tampa might be a better defense. Uh, Atlanta might have a little more firepower on offense, but you know, I, I don't I, I see the complete team being being New Orleans. Mm-hmm. You know what's the second most easiest schedule on here, Spoon? The Atlanta Falcons. You know, people... They need it. Yeah, obviously. Desmond Ritter. Yeah, Desmond Ritter, obviously, of course, you know. Do you think he should have been put in the fire last year a little bit? You know, or maybe, maybe a little bit more. Obviously, had Marcus Mariota there, and now he's no longer there, and it's his show now? Yeah, I think it was good they had Mariota for a while, um, but... Yeah, you know, third round quarterback, chances of him being good and successful are not high. Um, but and, and I, I really don't see it, especially coming from a program like Cincinnati. They didn't really play anybody. Um, so he is completely unproven. And I frankly can't believe Atlanta's rolling into the season with him as their, their quarterback. And it's interesting because when you look at the Atlanta Falcons, I mean, obviously. Um... You know, when you look at the Falcons, I mean, like, you know, last year, this team was a complete disaster. I mean, they have really retooled this offseason, obviously, addressed some key issues, especially on defense. Um, but when you look at Atlanta, you know, Arthur Blank, you know, you know, he's been a proven owner, proven winner as an owner. Um, they've at their, they drafted, I thought, OK. I mean, like, I love the running back situation now. Um so when you look at the schedule Atlanta's got, I mean, as we mentioned, the the um, NFC South not a great division. Brady's out of the division now. Um, so when you look at Atlanta, what is your outlook with the Falcons? 
I think their best case best case scenario is going five hundred. Yeah, I mean, like when you look at and the that's that's best case. I don't see it happening, even well, with the easy schedule. The odds makers have Atlanta winning at least eight and three. I mean, going going eight games, projected win to at least eight eight wins. I mean, you know, when you look at that schedule, so. You know, but you you don't see, yeah, maybe eight and eight looks good for them. Maybe you know what I mean. Who knows? Well, let's not forget there's seventeen games now. Yeah, seventeen games. So eight and nine could be a possibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so. I don't think that gets it done. No, uh, no. But you know, I think the Saints, the Saints are going to be around ten wins. So that's yeah. going to be the marker. Yeah, I think for that the, division. I think the Saints will be around ten wins for sure. I mean, like it's hard for me to trust Tampa Bay when it comes to offensive. Integrity and offense juggernaut. Um, we're gonna stay a little bit with the um, with the um, NFC South. Of course, the third easiest schedule is actually in the AFC. It actually, has the most easiest schedule in the AFC. It's the Indianapolis Colts. Um, when you look at the AFC South, um, you know, obviously, you know, you still look at Tennessee still being one of the top teams, obviously defensively, but they've made, they've been sellers at the deadline. Houston, you know, they, they're they starting over from scratch. But Jacksonville could be the favorite in that division when you really look at it. Um, what's your take on the Indianapolis Colts getting this? Boy, they need an easy division with a rookie quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, Anthony Richardson, a quarterback? Yeah. I, to me, that team's kind of a mess, um, especially after last year, firing their coach. You know, the quarterback turmoil, can't find a guy. Um, and with somebody so unproven, you know, with Richardson, it's, it's, it's still, I don't know. I see them as a team still struggling and, and probably going to pick in the top five, potentially top three next year. They don't have like, they don't, they, they need more pieces to that puzzle over there in Indianapolis. I mean, like, obviously, you know, maybe a, a deep receiver, maybe another lineman, maybe another. You know, I mean, they still need pieces over there in Indianapolis. You know, obviously, yeah, the schedule helps, but when you look at that division, yeah, Jacksonville is going to be a team to beat, but Tennessee could be a player there. I mean, I don't, you know, what they, what the odds makers have Indianapolis right now is at six, six, almost six and a half. I mean, like, which I don't really see that with Indianapolis considering the mess that they were in last year. I'd take the under there. Yeah, I'd definitely take the under for sure. I mean, like, when you look at that schedule coming up or Indy, I mean, yeah. It's an, I don't know why he was thinking, whoever wrote this this article we were using, like, um, thought Indianapolis had the easiest, one of the easiest schedules. I mean, it's hard for me to trust that the Colts have this type of schedule where it's, where it's easy. You know, I don't think it's an easy schedule they got. I mean, right. but still, I mean. Obviously, you know, that's something to really, really look for with Indianapolis. Um, you know, let's go back to the AFC, to the NFC South. I mean, this is our their fourth best team here. Um, the Carolina Panthers have the e- at the fourth easiest schedule out of everybody. Of course, you know, Carolina just got the number one pick. Um, I, mean, I mean, like, um, they did the fighter head coach, um, who is the um, new coach at Nebraska now, if you heard about that. Um, who, Wilkes? Oh no, not Wilkes. I mean, like I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking somebody used to be in the NFL. Now it's a coach at Nebraska. Now, Matt Rule. Matt Rule. Yeah, that's it. Who was I thinking? Oh, I didn't even hear that. Yeah, hmm. he's the new coach at Nebraska now. Um, but Carolina has got the fourth easiest schedule, and I'm going like, uh, okay. I mean, that division's there for the taking. Obviously, you got New Orleans there. You got Atlanta. You got them. Um, Tampa Bay still a mess. We talked about it. But who are the right frame of mind? would give Carolina the fourth easiest schedule. I don't know. That's tough, but um, I, I think they're playing, uh, you know, with the easy schedule into how bad that division is. Yeah, that um, division is not good. And you know that. <laughs> so that's why you got the Saints, Falcons, and, and Panthers on this list as having the easiest schedule. So right. I, I um, again, another one with a rookie quarterback. Excuse me. They're going to need – uh, some breaks because <laughs> Bryce Young, as as good as he was at Alabama, this is this is not college anymore. No, uh, and his his height is going to play a factor into it. We'll see how much. 
I mean, of a factor. I mean, you but... look at you look at you look at small quarterbacks. You look at tiny quarterbacks. I mean, yeah, Drew Brees, obviously. You got Russell Wilson over in Denver now. I mean, you got Geno Smith. He's even he's a small quarterback. I mean, like you know, but he's had success. He's had success though. I mean, yeah, everybody's gonna look at Drew Brees and say he's the guy that's had the most success. He and you know what I mean. And basically, I mean, when you look at when you look at Carolina's schedule. You know, the projected win total is seven, seven and a half. I mean, you're they taking the under? Weapons. You think? Uh, seven and a half? I, I would take the under, but I would say they're at seven. You think they're at seven? I think they're at seven. Is it because lane. of how bad that division is? That's part of it. They also have, they do have some weapons. They have, yeah. uh, you know, they added Chark. They yep. started with DJ Moore. Yep. But they brought in Miles Sanders to run. Um it's, I think they could be a surprise team. They could if all, be. If all things go right for them, I think they could They could threaten for the division. They could. I mean, it would like, have to be a lot going right, but but I wouldn't be too surprised. A lot has to go right for them. I mean, my goodness. And then the last team with the top five of the easiest schedules, um, how about the San Francisco 49ers? Um, when you look at them, I mean, like, their quarterback situation is a – it's basically a mess. I mean, you yeah. look at who's going to start a quarterback for them. Is it Trey Lance? Is it? <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you don't know who's going to start a quarterback for them. I mean, you got. I would got, imagine it's Lance, but they also brought in Sam Darnold, who's a pretty viable backup. Sam Darnold's a viable backup, yes, but, you know. Especially in that system. I mean, but I can't trust Trey Lance in this situation because. You look at the last two years, he's been injury prone, man. You know what I mean? Just been hurt. Yep. yep. It's, uh, yeah, and, and factor in, you know, the college he went to, he does not have a ton of experience at any level mm-hmm. past high school. So it's going to be on Kyle Shanahan to get him ready. Uh, and it's going to be on him to stay healthy. Um, but I mean, talk about having a, successful situation or a good situation with with that defense that o-line that running game the weapons on offense i think sam darnold could have a good a good year i think he's the starter if he's the starter if he's the starter i think he can have a good year i mean they got san fran at 10 and a half and you look at that division the nfc the nfc west yes seattle's much improved um but then you look at, of course, Arizona. You, you can't trust Arizona in that division. I mean, you got, you got the Rams in that division. They I mean, could bounce back. The Rams, the Rams could. could the Rams could bounce back. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Rams here, um, six easiest schedule, you got the Chicago Bears, the Monsters of the Midway. Um, seven and a half when you look at them. Um, we know what the Bears have. Um, just... Um, but when you look at the NFC North, I mean, yeah, Detroit's the team to beat in that division. But you still got um, you still got Green Bay, obviously bringing a new quarterback. Um, then you have um, you know, and then of course there's Minnesota with Kirk Cousins in there, and that um, and that d- their defense has been very suspect. So when you look at the NFC North, when you look at Chicago, you know, Justin Fields, we know is the real deal quarterback. It's but they lost their running game. They their lines a mess. So why in the world would you give Chicago maybe the sixth easiest schedule? Um, I think they're also factoring in the division. Um, I think maybe odds makers don't really, even though the Lions win totals nine and a half, mm-hmm. uh, I think there's still people scared to get on the Lions bandwagon. Yeah. Green Bay is a mess. Minnesota is due for a downturn. Um, especially after winning 13 games last year, the way they won them. Well, they did beat uh, Buffalo in that crazy game over there. That's another one that they really should not have won. Um, right. But that division, that division is, it's, it's another one that's kind of up for grabs. Like the NFC South, the AFC South. Um, it's hard to trust some of the teams that are projected to win it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's not, it's not Kansas City. It's not Buffalo. It's mm-hmm. not San Fran, even so, or Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, those are really the the juggernauts. So it's that's why the it's hard to play the schedule game. You know, it's 
it may look easy on paper, but once the new year begins, you can throw out last year's records because each year is completely different in the NFL. Well, yeah, every, every year is completely different, obviously, but when you look at a division like the NFC North, um, you know, like what we're going to talk about with the NFC North, obviously you look at you look at a Green Bay, I mean, like, you know, obviously you're curious to see how Jordan Love does, you know, but, you know, this team lost a lot of talent. Um, Minnesota, we talked about the downturn. I mean, like, but is Kirk Cousins, does he still have enough? I mean, like, you know where Kirk, Kirk Cousins went to, school, went to high school at, Holland Christian and Holland. Um, and then, of course, then there's the Lions, obviously, with Jared Goff at quarterback. I mean, I think when you look at, the um the Chicago Bears they're in a perfect spot to at least maybe do some damage if Justin Fields stays healthy. There is, but he can't do it by himself. And no. I, I maybe they improved on defense. I don't really see a ton of improvement on offense. Mm-mm. Unless Fields is going to take a huge step forward. Yeah, unless Fields take a step forward. I mean, like they they did add DJ Moore. They added to the O line. Like you said, the running game took a step back, talent wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Houston's got the seventh most easiest schedule, obviously. AFC South. Um, they got them at six and a half. We know Houston's was a disaster last year, but you gotta love their future talent, their 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 future stock. Um, but they got the seventh most easiest schedule here on this on this list. Um, do you do you agree with the do you agree with the odds makers about the Texans? Yeah, you can't put too low of a total on. Uh, six and a half is one of the lowest totals. Um, in the league, so yeah, I, I can't see them. I can't see them taking the over on that. No. Um, Pittsburgh's got the eighth easiest schedule. I mean, like when you look at the Steelers, um, I call the Steelers Dr. Brent Baker's team, obviously. Um, but Pittsburgh last year kind of really struggled in the AFC North. Um, I think obviously the the quarterback situation there. Um. It's something to really watch for. Um, and they added some upgrades this offseason. Um, what's your take on the Steelers' chances, especially when you look at AFC North? Obviously, you look at Baltimore's back with Lamar at quarterback, and then you look at um, Cincinnati. Obviously, you got Joe Burrow there, and Cleveland's just, Cleveland's just a mess. They are, but that might be one of the strongest divisions. Um, I, I, every year. Pittsburgh's going to win at least 10 games, so book it. I mean, it doesn't matter. They just, they, they're a franchise that doesn't make excuses, and they produce. So I, um, I, I, I don't really trust Baltimore or Cleveland. Cincy, Why don't you trust Baltimore? Because I don't think, I don't think uh, Lamar is a top five quarterback. You don't think he is, especially with his athletic ability. He's got incredible athletic ability, but the passing leaves a lot to be desired. I know he does not get hit much when he runs, mm-hmm. um, but running always opens you up to the risk of getting hurt. Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that. I, don't, I know they are changing their offense. We'll see how it goes. I know they brought in a new coordinator. Um, but Lamar, for, for them to have success beyond the first round of the playoffs, Lamar has got to improve his passing. Yes, I agree with you there. Lamar's got to improve his passing. and then But you're still in the division, you know, and we got, kind of got a little off topic a little bit because we're talking Pittsburgh. But do you see the terrible towels getting, do you still think they're going to get 10 wins this year? It, it's it's hard to see, but once the season starts and they do it every year, um, I don't know. I, I really don't care for Kenny Pickett, so I'm not sure. That's mm-hmm. that's yeah. It, it's hard to bet the under with Mike Tomlin, though. You know, no. it's hard for them to you can't to lose under ten or to lose mm-hmm. more than seven games. So right, so, but they I don't know. The odds are at eight eight point seven for Pittsburgh. So. You know, the, I'd take the over. You take the over for sure. Tennessee's yeah. got the ninth easiest schedule, obviously, 7.3. To me, Tennessee's a big mess. I mean, like huge mess. I, they're a big mess. I mean, I didn't like I didn't like the quarterback pick that they took. I didn't like the um there are a lot of things I didn't like with Tennessee. I mean, 
obviously, when you look at, and then you look at that schedule, yeah, they're in the AFC South, but you still got to deal with Jacksonville. You still got to deal, I mean, like, Jacksonville, I still think is the cream of the crop in that division. Tennessee could yep. be a player for sure. Um, who knows? I mean, if Tannehill's still the guy at quarterback, which I think he will be, if they if he is, I think they'll win at least ten, maybe maybe ten games for sure. Oof, I'll take I'll take under that. Why would you take under? I don't think they have much weapons. I don't think Henry's got much left in the tank, and their defense was not great last year. So add that all up, the continual decline. Um, I think they should have tried to sell off more, but. We'll see. They're they're keeping the band together somewhat, um, but but the way the way the second half of the season went last year, that's I see more of that mm-hmm. than the first half of last year. Mm-hmm. I agree with you there. Um, number the tenth most easiest schedule is the Seattle Seahawks. Um, I think this is my favorite in the AFC in the NFC West. I mean, obviously with what everything's got. Yeah, San Francisco is good, but I don't trust their quarterback situation. But Seattle, I do. I mean, obviously when you look at the Seahawks. Um, yeah, if the Rams do come back, that's a big deal, but, but I, I just think Seattle with everything they've got, I mean, like everything they've stocked, they drafted well, they, they micromanaged that team pretty well. Um, when you look at Seattle's schedule, I mean, they're at, I think they're eight and a half. Um, you know, so when you look at the Seahawks playoff team last year, got a lot of confidence. Uh, what's your t- thoughts and take on the Seahawks? When you look at their schedule, I think they got a ton of talent, um, but the the straw that's going to stir that drink is is Gino. Yeah, and Gino. Uh, again, he had not a great second half of the year mm-hmm. last year. So what what are we going to get? You know, um, he's proven to be more of a journeyman over his career. He's not stuck until he got to Seattle as a starter. So. Um, I, <sighs> Anytime you have a defense like theirs, it will keep you in, especially with the talent they added. Uh, it's going to keep you in it. But when the chips are down, I don't, I don't know if they can get over the San Fran hump in that division. And you look at that division. You got if the Rams come back to life, that could be a problem for for Seattle. And then, like obviously, you know Arizona's a bit of a decline a little bit. Obviously, with Kyle Mur- Kyle Murray's injury. Um, so when you look at Seattle's case, would you go over or under on Seattle? Over under eight and a half. Yep. Give me eight. So give me the under. Ooh, the under. It's interesting. Um, the eleventh most easiest, you know, and I think this is the local team we gotta talk about is the Detroit Lions. You know, we've already when you look at the Lions schedule this year, um, obviously MC North, um, obviously having to play um you got Kansas City opening night. Um, that'll be very interesting. Um, we're going to talk top five um, most nightmaric schedules in a little bit here. Um, but what's your take on the Lions schedule? When you when you, when you you saw it a couple weeks ago, what were your initial thoughts on this? <laughs> they play a lot of good teams, uh, but the <laughs> schedule is, is kind of nice the way it, it's laid out uh, with their bye. In the middle of the year, they have three Thursday games, so that means three weeks of ten days of rest before their next opponent. Um, they don't have to go to Green Bay in the middle of the winter. You know, their late game is Chicago, um, and it, you know it won't be. It, I mean, it might be crazy cold, but it won't be. January well, you got Lake Michigan. Thing. You got Lake Michigan right there. You know what I mean? You got Lake. Yeah. Mi- if you think about. It, if you have a northeast wind coming off Lake Michigan over there in Chicago, you're definitely in a lot of trouble, man. True, true. Um, I don't know. I, the 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 totals at nine and a half. I'm going to take the over because I think they need to win this division. And it's going to take <laughs> eleven games or more. Um, but you know, I love my Lions. I'm still scared. I know you. I know you love your Lions, and you're still scared. I mean, when you look at the Lions, the NFC North looks winnable. You have a quarterback in Jared Goff. You have, I know you didn't like the fact they didn't go get a receiver in the draft. I think they did get one. It was a tall guy. You know, we, you and I played late. late in the first, late in the draft, which is, 
kind of a big time concern for me when I look at obviously the um with that team. You know, you got Amara St. Brown, Jamison Williams is suspended for the first six games of the year, which is a problem. And um, you know, when you look at um when you look at the um Lions situation, defensively is the big question mark when you look at the Lions. Um, you know, obviously at linebacker, that's a question mark for me. Um do they have the opposite pass rushers as in Hutchinson? That's a big question mark for me. Um, you know that they were two of their secondary, um, obviously. So when you look at the Lions situation, um, defensively, do you think you can do you think this team can go over with that defense, especially when they, they um they've had it tough early on, then yeah, they rebounded last year, but do you think they can keep that momentum alive? In a way, yeah. Uh, it might take time to gel together, but I really like the talent they added on defense, and I like the fact that uh, second-year players are getting on to their third year, first-year players going on to their second year. So they should they should improve from where they were uh, in the first half of last year, and they, they did last year. But I, to me, I, yeah, I think I think the defense looks pretty good. I'm a little more concerned with like you said a receiver um but they have compared to where they were two years ago they got a ton more talent they have the same systems in place so it it really should be plug and play and there there is no excuse not to win the division and and they didn't even change the coordinators which is a big deal over there in detroit i mean obviously that's the um big time story there um, when you look at, of course, you know, obviously they get to play the Seattle Seahawks this year. I think that's a big game there for Lions fans. They really want to get oh, that yeah. game back after what happened last year. I think that was a game that cost them a trip to the playoffs. Um, Definitely. You know, and that was a big, um, big hurt for them. Um, let's go now from the easiest schedules. Let's go to the most nightmare schedules. Um, like this is basically like you're going to be the screaming in your sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> these ga- these type of games, you know what I mean? I mean, like you can even put, I mean, like you can even like do like a um, you know, do like a paper bag or like something because this is like, or if you like sleep at night and you think, oh my goodness, my head just had a nightmare, you know what I mean? That type oh, of schedule. Yeah. You know who has the most nightmaric schedule? Let me see, the New England Patriots. Yes, the New England Patriots. They're done. They're toast. <laughs> How would you think that they're done and doomed? I, I I don't like Mac Jones. I don't think Bill Belichick has adapted very well to life without Brady. <laughs> he has not, and you know it. I mean, like obviously he misses Tom Brady. You know, if you if you could ever just like do like a picture. I know they do a picture of like of Dexter. You know Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. Oh, yeah. Um you know that, you know, they do like a picture of him like praying, you know what I mean? Like, or like, oh, yeah. or, I mean, like praying, like, they should put a picture of that with, um, they should do like a picture of that with Mac Jones on there. Go like, or maybe a picture of Tom Brady, you know, when he was with the Patriots, you know what I mean? Like, why, why did you have to leave us? You know what I mean? Sort of like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, <sighs> I don't, I don't see, I know Bill Belichick's a great coach, but he might be done, you know. If, yeah. he, if he can win this year, if they can win nine plus games, I think that would be a great <laughs> season for them. When you look at this division they're in, you look at the AFC East, I mean, like, you got Miami in there with Tua, you got the New York Packers with Aaron Rodgers, you yeah. got the Buffalo Bills are in there with Josh Allen. And then you have, um, you know, so that's you're already scared to death starting off there. And then, right. you know, that's that's a brutal division right there. I mean, the AFC, the AFC East is absolutely brutal when you look at that schedule. I mean, if you're New England, you know, you're in some trouble, man. I mean, I'm not being mean to you, but that spells doom when you look at um New England. I agree. I think they're in the basement of that division. You think they're in the basement of the division? If Tua doesn't stay healthy, maybe Miami, because they, they don't look so good without him at quarterback. Yeah, they did not um, look good with him at, without him at quarterback. 
I don't know how good the Jets are going to be either. But... The Jets are the Jets remind me of the Jets are the knee are the Green Bay Packers of last year because of Aaron Rodgers. You look at all the pieces that the Jets got. You know, you basically got is um Aaron Rodgers. You got I mean Randall Cobb's there. You got Alan Lazard's there. It's the Green Bay. It's the New York Packers. Basically, it's what it is. You know, especially when you look at what they were earlier with the, um, and they still got that defense is going to be very good. It's just the pieces they had offensively, they got older offensively, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, Aaron Rodgers has a lot to, to prove. He, he's not getting any younger, man. I mean, you know, you look at, obviously, we talked about this, um, couple weeks a couple podcasts ago with the Brett Favre effect you know let's not forget Brett Favre played for New York before he went to Minnesota I mean like you know I mean so do you see Aaron Rodgers career similar to that Uh, it's crazy that he went there I I, I, it's hard to compare the two because Brett just kept hanging on then he had success for a year in Minnesota um, he, he, they did not have a good year when he was with the Jets. Mm-mm. It was 08. Um, I, I don't know. I think Aaron Rodgers, like Brett Favre, he brings a little bit of a circus to town. So we'll see. We'll see. If that thing spirals out of control, it, it could be bad. Yeah, I think it could be really bad there. But, yeah, New England's got the toughest schedule when you look at it here. Um, a team has got the second hardest schedule. Is the team that Tom Brady bought stock in, the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, you know it's kind of yeah. it's kind of ironic because it's funny because you know um, Josh McDaniels is the head coach there. Is the head coach there? Jimmy G's the quarterback there, and now Tom Brady's almost like your boss over there. So yeah. how fitting and how unusual, and it's pretty scary at the same time. You know, yes. that it's very scary at the same time. I still wonder whatever happened to Matt Patricia. I believe he is a, some defensive coach with Philly now. Interesting. Really yeah. interesting. Oh, because it's... Philly, Philly's going to be good. I mean, they're going to be good. There's and no Philly way. has Darius Slay, who did not get along with Matt Patricia in Detroit. Yeah, pretty much, and oh man, that, if that's a soap opera, there, oh man, that could the entire be... NFL is a soap opera, really. I know the entire NFL is a soap opera, but still, I mean, like, you know, but then the soap opera, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it brings you everywhere every day, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, but the the late, the Las Vegas Raiders could be a, a soap opera this year when you look at the AFC West. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that is they're a nightmare in, in its own right. I mean, yeah, they're in trouble. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, obviously, when you look at that division, you got Kansas City there. Chargers are improved. Um, you got, yeah, I mentioned Kansas City. We got the Chargers are in there. Vegas is in there. Denver. Oh yeah, Denver. Oh well, Denver's an interesting one because Sean Payton's there, and you got Russell Wilson there. And if he turns that thing around without any draft capital, yeah, <laughs> Vegas is clearly in trouble. You're right. I mean, honestly, Ian, if there's a team that I would say that deserves to go under this category, because when I look at Vegas here, Vegas is seven and a is seven and a half as almost seven. You think you got the under here? Because I know the Patriots also got the under as well. You have to yeah. go to the under on both those two teams. I think, yeah. I think they're both right around six, seven wins. I mean, I would say even more lower on New England's part. I think maybe five. Oh, baby. <laughs> Could know? be, but I don't know. Bill I, Belichick's got some wizardry left in him, I think. I mean, could, I you, could you seriously imagine the city of Boston right now? I mean, your Bruins just lost to the Florida Panthers in seven games. <laughs> And then you look at the Boston Celtics. Deep trouble against the Miami Heat. So Boston has had some issues with Miami lately. Yes, indeedy. They've had some issues with Miami lately. I mean, 
We'll see if that continues in the fall. Yeah, speaking of the fish of Miami, they have the third toughest schedule in the league. Yeah. And obviously, you look at with Tua, and then, of course, you got the cheetah. You got the cheetah. Yep. yep. You know? And Yeah, they got some talent on. They got on some team talent on the team. They're solid. I mean, they're not bad. It's just the problem is. They brought in Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey, I, I'm going to like that pickup for Miami. Yeah, they gave up something to give him, but, you know, but still, I mean, like, Jalen Ramsey's going to be a good corner for them. I mean, he'll help in that secondary, yeah. that's for sure. Um, something I don't trust about that team, though. What is it that you don't trust about them? I don't know. I just think they're kind of fake. <laughs> you think they're fake? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a way. Because Tua, you know, it's... He's he's very injury prone. And they got in the playoffs without him getting hurt. With him hurt, they did. You, yeah, they did. <laughs> I they mean, did. the question is, do they have a reliable backup in case if he gets hurt? Well, their backup from last year, Bridgewater, is still oh. unsigned. So they don't yeah, have that's that. scary. That's not good. If he's if he if you're Miami, you gotta go get a backup quarterback right now. I mean, you I might want to go get Teddy. Comes here. You think Teddy comes here? Did he you really drafted Teddy Henderson now, Hook? Like you really drafted like Hooker? Yeah, because Hooker's still a year away, maybe. So you think if you think Teddy would be a good fit if he were alive? Oh, for sure. I think there's a lot of people that would d- disagree with you. I know that, but still, I, I think Hendon Hooker would would really benefit from having two quality starters in front of him, well, Bridgewater got- and and Goff. Yeah, golf has been a Jared Goff had a re, redeem, redeeming career this last year, a redeeming yep. season. You got you know that. I mean, oh absolutely. And you look at obviously, I could see a redemption for Tua because you know he has he's got something to prove now with what's been happening with the um with what's been happening with the Dolphins. I mean, like obviously, yeah, yeah, the division's gonna be interesting. Obviously, with the AFC East. But, you know, mm-hmm. you really look at that division and you really study it. I don't trust the Jets offensively. But right. Buffalo is probably, I think, the team to beat in that division. There's no doubt about that. Right. So when you look at Buffalo, I mean, it's clear as day that I think Buffalo is going to be the team to beat in that division. And speaking of the Bills, they got the fourth top of schedule in the league. Yeah. And... You look at the over under with Buffalo. Um, I mean, with Miami, Miami's at nine and a half. I mean, yep. do you think do you think they stay there, go under, or go on change? Give me that under. <laughs> you want under? I want the under. You want the under? Yeah, I want I, the under with the Bills too. You think you're going under with the Bills too? I mean, Buffalo's at ten and a half. They didn't add a running game. No, they, they didn't. Running game. They don't have a running game. They don't have a true running back. I thought personally that would have been a perfect trade if Buffalo traded with Tennessee for Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry would have been perfect on that team. They need him. They need him, yes. But I don't know what they was really do. what was what was Tennessee demanding Buffalo for not to get Derrick Henry. I mean, I was curious to see that. I'm not you know. Sure. He's got a high cap hit in Buffalo. I'm not sure what their cap situation's like. Maybe they couldn't afford to add him. I'm not positive on that. But well, the fit on the field, I, I would think, would be really good for those those outdoor Buffalo games. It would have been, especially when you look at Buffalo having to play their games in the cold in Lake Ontario when that Northwest wind <laughs> coming at you. I mean, still, I mean, could you just imagine when you play games in the Great Lakes, obviously, going to Cleveland, having to do with Lake Erie? Coming right. from me if you have that Northwest wind, and then you have Lake Ontario with Buffalo. Um, you know, it makes you feel like if you're a Lions fan, to be to be blessed to play in an indoor stadium. You know, yeah, yeah. I kind of wish we had a roof, at least. What do you mean you kind of wish you had or, a roof? I'm sorry, a uh, retractable roof. Why you think it should do well in outdoors? I football is an outdoor game. It can be, but it can also be an indoor game. You know that. It can. It can. It can. It can. But with Buffalo, yeah, the running game's a big concern, obviously. If if you if you shut down Josh Allen, you know, force them to throw it, I mean, they got problems. I mean, like, last year, 
you couldn't trust Devin Singletary in games. You really couldn't trust him. I mean, now when you look at this, the running game situation, I can't. You can't trust Buffalo in this situation if, if they have to run the football. You know what I mean? You know. Right. And but their defense is solid, but still, I mean, you can't really trust Buffalo in this situation where um, if they can't, if they can't really, if they can't run the ball, and especially in a game like this where you're going into an environment where um, you know, where you're gonna have to run the football. That, and, and your schedule is absolutely brutal. I mean, obviously you're playing against the AFC East, and yeah, you're fair in the division, but you still got to deal with Miami. You still got to deal with, you know, New England. You still got to deal with um, New York. I mean, like, playing games there, that's not easy. And then I don't know who they're opposing in the, um, uh, who opposing in the AFC, but, you know, that's going to be very challenging for them going forward there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And then the fifth toughest schedule is the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. Um, Kansas City this year, their odds are eleven and a half. Would you take yeah. the over or the under? I take the over. <laughs> is it because of Mahomes? Absolutely. And the fact that he redeemed a, to- a complete wide receiving core, which was this hard for me to trust. Yeah. And... Yeah, but but their defense was very young last year, and they mm-hmm. won the Super Bowl. So to see that take a step forward, I, to me, Kansas City is the best team in the league. Yeah. Even with Philly uh, having all the talent in the world, I uh, I you can't you can't beat Mahomes and what they have with Kelsey, and again with their second year players improving. Well, and I think that's the thing. Obviously, when you look at Mahomes, you know what I mean. Just with him and Kelsey is probably, I think Travis Kelsey's the best tight end in the league. There's no doubt about that. Um, him or Kittle, it's close, but it's probably Kelsey. You think Kittle's there too? I think Kittle's probably number two. Mm. And then you look at, of course, the sixth top of schedule in the league. You got the Los Angeles Chargers, obviously with Justin Herbert. Um, you know, we talked about the AFC West. Um, I, I mean, like, this, the um the under the over is nine and a half. Do you think that's right for the Chargers? I think I think they can get ten wins. You they think, got a new O coordinator, right? In Kellen Moore, right? Hopefully he can unlock more of what Herbert is. They still have great talent. Um, yeah, I think I think they can get the over, especially if let's say Denver does not take a step forward or bounce back. Right. You know. Um. I, 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 they they need to do something though, because Herbert is a really he's a great quarterback, and they need to they need to get in the playoffs and and let him win a game. Not uh, you know, unlike what happened with Jacksonville last year. Mm-hmm. And I think that's gonna be interesting, especially when you look at the Chargers. The seventh top of schedule is the New York Jets. I mean, when you look at the Jets, you know they're gonna get a lot of prime time games because of Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Because and you know Aaron Rodgers is gonna be complaining to the refs almost every single time when he gets <laughs> hit. You know that. Oh yeah. You know, and it's not a rocket scientist. Like if, if like let's say hypothetically, if I was playing football, you know, if I, I and I'm going against Aaron Rodgers, you know, Aaron Rodgers is gonna be complaining about every every two plays. You know what I mean? That's All what he's been. night long. All night long, he's gonna be complaining. So yep. when you look at the Jets. They've got a lot of games, a lot of hype surrounding them. You know that they're going to get probably the best announced crews in the planet, you know, because mm-hmm. they all want to hype up Aaron Rodgers. You're in a division with Buffalo. You're in a division with New England. You're in a division with Miami. So can you trust? And they have the odds with the Jets at nine and a, nine and a half. This is definitely a team I think can win maybe at least six games. <laughs> <laughs> but their oh, defense, like their defense is going huh? to keep them in games because yeah. if he struggles, if he gets hurt, they're going to cry for Zach Wilson to come back there. <laughs> you know, and we know how Zach Wilson is. I mean, my goodness, It'd be hilarious. It would be just, it would be a nightmare scenario if, if, if um. Zach Wilson had to come into a game if Rodgers gets hurt 
you know? Because I know Rod is, a, is an Iron Man. I know he is. But, yeah. but if you're Zach Wilson, I mean, just imagine yourself if you're Zach Wilson. You know, you just had the starting <laughs> job. You were drafted, was it t- number two overall? Yes. And you lost your starting job last year. You, and you basically are, I mean, like, you're basically a mess. I mean, like, you know, you got your money and all that, but you want to play. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Is there, right. do you see in the future, Ian, that Zach Wilson could possibly, if Rodgers goes at least another five years, Whew. if he goes another five years, I see Zach Wilson being dealt. But there's oh, yeah. not, but there's not a lot of teams that need quarterbacks right now. You know what I mean? Maybe Tampa, yeah. perfect, perfect fit for him could be Tampa Bay. Uh, it could be. He's got to go somewhere where it might be fine where he's at. If if Rogers is going to be a good mentor, you know, maybe Rogers realizes he's not going to play forever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Wilson had a lot of expectations. And he was jerked around, benched, brought back in, benched. Um, he needs a year just to sit and watch and not play. And then reevaluate where he's at, in my opinion. Well, I mean, like, you know, and I think he's gonna I think he's gonna complain. I really do with New York. I really well, think you don't he think he needs to be he's... humble and shut up. <laughs> you think he's gonna you think you think he's gonna be humble. I don't I don't, I don't see it. I think he should be. I don't see it. Yeah, it's hard to see. Um, yeah, I mean... Hey, Sam. Yeah. I got to go uh, check on Marlo and get some dinner here in a bit. You want to pick one more team? Yep, I'll pick one like? more team I like, and then we'll call it a day. Um, Call it a show? Call it a show. We got... How about this, Ian? Uh-oh. Let's Wait, talk... Can I guess who you're going to say? Let's talk... Let me guess who you're going to say. Who? I'll give you two teams who I think you're going to say. Who? You're either going to say the Ravens or the Cowboys. Yeah, both those teams. Let's talk both those teams. <laughs> okay, when you look at Baltimore, I mean, let's mm-hmm. go one more first. We talked a lot earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously with the Ravens. And we talked a lot earlier. They've addressed the running game. Mm-hmm. They added Odell. Yep, they added Odell. They added some pieces. I mean, we know their defense is going to be good. We know their defense is going to be good. So when you look at Baltimore, you know I think they're one of the favorites in the NFC North. And I think that NFC North, my bad. I, my goodness, mm-hmm. I get my I get my conferences mixed up. <laughs> um, but the Baltimore Ravens, I think are due for a bounce back year. I think they're due because of Lamar. I mean, they were they they had the quarterback issues last year. Lamar got hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, they got in the playoffs for some reason, <laughs> but they did get in the playoffs. Um, but Lamar's back, got a new contract. I mean, he's happy now in Baltimore. He's all happy. So I expect. Yeah. I know the over is nine and a half with Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You know where I'm going? I'm going, I'm going over. Over. I'm going over, and I think they're I'll going. Go under, then. You're going under. Yep. Why? That division's tough, and I think Lamar showed his true colors. I don't trust Cincinnati year. in this division. Yeah, they got Joe Burrow, but yeah. but when you look at it, Ian, um, I think when you look at that division, and I think that um, you know. I don't trust Pittsburgh even. I don't even trust Pittsburgh either. But who yeah. knows? But I think when you look at Baltimore, I think they're going to be a surprise the AFC. Don't be surprised if they they could win the division. I think they could seriously win the division. They could seriously they win. Could. They, they definitely could. could. Absolutely. And you know, it's kind of funny because we didn't talk the NFC East. You know, all show. AFC East? NFC, oh, NFC East. East. Right, right, right. It's kind oh. of funny because... Now we get to talk the NFC East because we talked almost every division here. Mm-hmm. Um, but the NFC East, yeah, you know Philly's going to be favored. Um, Dallas could be a player. Got Daniel Jones in New York. <laughs> Daniel Jones in New York. Yes. 
I can't believe that they paid Daniel Jones in New York. <laughs> I know. Why? I, I mean, know. he had a did he have a career renaissance last year? I know he got him in the playoffs, but mm-hmm. why did you pay Daniel Jones? They had to. They got nobody else. <laughs> And he did. He had a he had an okay year. I don't think he's. I mean, they good. compared Daniel Jones to Eli Manning, right? And you know how that is. Yeah. And we know he can't we really yet till he has a Super Bowl ring or two, but right. You can't compare. You can't compare Daniel Jones to Eli Manning. You can't do that. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. But Dallas. I mean, lost Zeke. Um, I think he's. I think Zeke's in Philly now, right? Did he sign? I don't know if he signed. I don't know if he signed. Did he sign in Philly? I don't know if he did. I got to look. But um, well, they also lost Kellen Moore. To me, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that is a serious deal when you look at it, especially with what Dak does over there in Dallas. I mean, like, obviously. Well, he's been with Dak his whole career. So I know he's been with Dak his whole career. I mean, and you know Kellen Moore has been a really good quarterback when he was at Boise. Um, well, he's a good coordinator. He really – you know, they had, mm-hmm. they had some really good offenses in Dallas. They did. And I will be very curious to see how Dallas does this I season. I think McCarthy's going to be calling plays down there. That scares me. That is a little scary. That is we'll scary. See. They have they have good t- – they, they, they also have a good defense. Let's not forget they added uh, the corner to go with uh, – what's his name? <laughs> Diggs. They yeah. added uh, Gilmore. Diggs. Yeah, Gilmore, yeah. I mean, like, that is a good fit there for Dallas. But when you look at that division they're in, the AFC, the NFC East, I mean, Philadelphia, you know, has been like a complete renaissance there. They got a mm-hmm. bunch of line. I, Jim Schwartz, defensive coordinator at Cleveland, right? D coordinator, yes. Okay. I thought it was – I'm still thinking he's still in Philly for some reason. My brain's just mm. going gone. It's been a long <laughs> day, Spoon. It's been a long day. I know it's been a long day for you, too. Oh, uh, yeah. But – when you look at the division, um, New York is an interesting team. I mean, the Giants. Right. And then we're not even talking the Washington Commanders here. We're not <laughs> even talking about Washington. Do we need to? Washington is a mess, man. I they mean, really are. They got they're the doormat. They got the, division. You know what their eyes are? Their, their wins are six and a half. I got them going under. I... I'm I'm with you on that. Yeah, they they're going under. I mean, obviously six and a half. I mean, like, I mean, what do you see? What do you see the Eagles? I mean, what do you see the Eagles? I mean, the Eagles. Oh, they're twelve plus. Yeah, you you think they're going under or over? No, I I think they're going to go over. What's their over under at? Um, ten and a half. Ten and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I can see them winning eleven or twelve. They did lose a lot of talent on D, but um, not that. They were a juggernaut, and they had a lot of talent to begin with. And right. They added more talent, so. Right. I, I definitely see Philly going over, Commanders under. going under. What about the Giants and the Cowboys? Giants, eight and a half. Ooh, baby. Mm-hmm. Give me the under. Let's say they regress. Cowboys, nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Just because I hate them. Give me the under. Other teams here to mention. You got Green Bay. You got Green Bay. You got them under. I know oh, yeah. you do. Uh, the Rams. What about Matthew Stafford? Got him under? I take over. Over Ooh. seven and a half. What about the Cleveland Browns? You got nine and a half, nine point nine wins. <laughs> under. <laughs> under, really? Oh my goodness. Um, yep. And then of course we got Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You got them under or over six? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Under yeah. six and a half. Six and a half. Okay. So I think we got. Uh, I think we got everybody in the NFL here. I think we do. Um, we touched on everybody. That's for touched sure. on everybody. That's for sure. Obviously. Um, any final thoughts, Ian? On um, before I let you go, brother. You know, I love summertime. I hope it goes slowly but smoothly. And when fall comes here, we're all ready for Lions in Arrowhead to shock the world. You're still, you're still in baseball mode, aren't you? Oh, I'm just getting started with baseball mode. We haven't even hit the 50 game mark yet. We haven't even, and I know I've, I've read, I've read an article in the Detroit News today that they're thinking about the Tigers possibly win the AL Central this year. Well, the AL Central is a joke. <laughs> but still, I mean, like if the Tigers win that division, that's a daycare center win the division. My goodness, 
I mean, the day care Hinch, manager of the year, the daycare center in the NFL. You know, in my opinion, who's the, who do you think is the daycare center of the NFL? Well, it was the Lions. Not anymore. Mm, they're still pretty young. They're still pretty they're young. young team no, guys. they're not a daycare center anymore, though. I think a daycare center to me is the um, I think a daycare center is the Washington Commanders. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Pretty much <laughs> with Sam Howell leading the charge. Yeah, I mean, like pretty much. All yeah. right, Ian, I'll let you go, brother. You take care of yourself, man. All right, Sam, you do the same, and we'll uh, talk football again soon. Eh? Yep, you too, man. God bless you. Adios, adios. Boy, yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, final <laughs> thoughts, obviously. Final thoughts, obviously. When you look at the um the season, how it's been. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of excitement. I mean, a lot of excitement, you know, when you break down the schedules. I mean, like, obviously, it's not easy. But, you know, who knows? Somebody can shock, shock the world and somebody and all that. So, we'll see what happens going to be, um, go forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, you know, stay tuned to some latest episodes of Lastly Brain Cells. Of course, our previous two episodes when we talked the NFL draft. And, um, you know, we broke down the NFL draft. Um... All right, now I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all soon, everybody. Take care and see you soon. God bless.